The president is in the final hours of his three-day tour of Alaska, and he's catching heat from all sides over global warming, the environment, and the state's biggest industry. Correspondent Dan Springer in Anchorage tonight on what appears to be a no-win situation for the president. President Obama wrapped up his three-day trip to Alaska by meeting with fishermen in Dillingham, the launching point to Bristol Bay, the world's largest salmon fishery. Yesterday, Mr. Obama hiked on a glacier which park rangers say has retreated 187 feet the past year. All told, one new study estimates the state's glaciers are annually losing 75 billion tons of ice. It is spectacular, though. And we want to make sure that our grandkids can see this. Mr. Obama's last stop is the tiny coastal town of Kotzebue, marking the first presidential visit north of the Arctic Circle. But for all his travels, Obama is not meeting with a single person tied to Alaska's lifeblood, the oil industry. 90% of Alaska's revenues come to us from our oil production. Oil production on the North Slope, we've been providing jobs and economic opportunities for Alaskans and around the country for 40, 45 years. With the price of oil dropping, Alaska's economy is suffering. It's in the red $3.5 billion this year. And ConocoPhillips, a major employer, just announced it's cutting 1,800 jobs company-wide. The Obama administration's all-of-the-above energy strategy in Alaska is pleasing none of the above. Environmentalists are outraged the president recently permitted Shell Oil to go back to drill in the Arctic this summer. They sued and protested in Seattle. Earl Kingick lived in Point Hope, the closest village to the drill rigs. My ancestors told me that they'll try to kill our language. Our language never die. Our language, they never destroy our language. Now, they want to destroy our way of life. But the oil industry says Mr. Obama remains too restrictive, blocking huge potential reserves and running up Shell's tab to $7 billion and years of delay. You would think if you wanted all of the above, you would have consistent access. You would have consistent permitting. We would be allowed to explore and develop those areas of federal land. And some more on that breaking news from the region. As you mentioned, there are five Chinese Navy ships operating just off the coast of Alaska in the Bering Sea. The Pentagon officials say that this is as close as they have ever been to this area. They are monitoring the situation. They believe these Navy ships had just done a joint operation with Russia. Brett? Dan Springer, live in Anchorage tonight. Dan, thanks. U.S. and